Amen. Are you there? I said, Amen. Thank you, Mommy Esther. Mommy Esther was, was talking to me. Praise the Lord. I am that youth. I am that youth. Now you think I am not a youth because you see my gray hair. But the youth is inside here. And that youth inside here is going to arise. What are you there? You will arise. I said you will arise. You will shine. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. All your darkness of the past, everything is gone. And a small one, look at that, my boy there, that small one, my girl there, my daughter there, that small one, you'll become great in Jesus' name. And all the greatness we've been talking about, all the goodness we've been talking about, the Lord make it to flow into your life in Jesus' name. And somebody shout again. That amen will fulfill all the glory of the Lord in your life. Rest of that time. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. You have come to lift us up. Every boy, every girl, every man, every woman. And Lord, I pray the glory of the Lord will shine into every life and through every life in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word. Fulfill the proclamation. Fulfill the prophecy. Fulfill the dream in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now. Today, as we come to the final conclusion, already the word came forth. And the word has come to you, even this morning, that you will take charge. And God will put you in charge. This morning, the amen of this morning must be higher, greater, louder than all the amens you have given from the beginning. Amen? Yeah. In charge. I'm looking for her. In charge. I'm looking for him there. In charge. The Lord has released your future, your destiny, into your hand. Nobody will take that released future away from your hand in Jesus' name. Now, I've been going through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. But my life will not terminate at the point of T. And so your life will continue until U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And when your life reaches that height, you will be at the zenith. The zenith of your life. The peak of your life. The highest point of your life. And you will reach there in Jesus' name. Today, as I come to you, V, W, X, Y, Z, I'm talking to you on unique virtues and works 
exceeding youthful zeal. Anything you ever thought about in your youth, in your earlier years, the Lord is telling you, you will exceed. You will go beyond all that useful zeal. You start from here and you are going to get up there in Jesus' name. And look at for Samuel chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 8. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8, it's telling us and it says, He, the Almighty God, raises up the poor out of the dust and out of the donkey he raises us up and he makes us now to be at par with the princes because of the uniqueness of God in our lives. He has come and he tells you in this final hour, he says, do you are poor, impoverished? Do you didn't have anything? Do you begin at the zero level? You will get to the zenith in Jesus' name. Unique virtues and works exceeding useful zeal. Look at them, you. You tells us that we have unlimited, unsearchable, unction, uploaded by the upholder. Unlimited. That's what your life is now. That's your, what your path is now. You'll be unlimited in Jesus' name. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, reading from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, you couldn't be less than that. Less than the least of all saints. And Paul the Apostle realized what he was doing before, where he had been before, and all those bad, bad things that he did before. He said, even to be saved, wonderful wonders. Even to be brought into the family of God, wonderful wonders. I was less, and I still less than the least of all sins. Then it says, is this grace given, a gift, that I should preach, declare, proclaim among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. I want you to take a cue from that line up. See, look at Paul, look at Saul, the least of them all. And Peter had seen the Lord before he ever saw the Lord. John James and the others, they have interacted with the Lord before he ever came across Christ. He said, I am the least. And if you're the least, the Lord is lifting you up. And he's giving you unlimited, unsearchable, Unction uploaded by the upholder. Christ is the upholder. That word upload, upload. Uh, have you experienced that? You have a tablet, and that tablet, you want to program on it. An exciting program, uplifting a program, and the person is going to send the programs to you. He said, it's in the cloud. And from the cloud, you're going to download it to your system. And then you try to download it. The thing will not come. And so you look at your battery. And you say, the battery is now. And you see that the internet is not functioning because there is nothing to bring that message, that program in the cloud to your tablet. And so you plug it 
And then you leave it for some time. And after leaving it for some time, you come back and you look at it, nothing has changed. You say, watch, ah, this socket is not working. You unplug it and you plug it here and the battery, your battery is rising. I said, your battery is rising. You are charging that thing and you are going to so fully charge. And then you put all the, you know, pin number, password. And lo and behold, that program from the cloud will enter into your tablet. Am I talking to somebody far away there? What I'm telling you is there is something sent from the cloud of glory. The power, the anointing, the achievement, the possibilities of life already saying to you, check up in your tablet, check up in your heart, check up in your life. That uplifting program is already there now. If you cannot access it, check up your plugs and unplug from that dead socket that is not working and plug your life to the lively, active uh, socket, to the Lord, the Savior, and everything uh, that has been uploaded for you in the clouds will come inside there. Amen. Amen. How does that happen? Already Paul the Apostle said, me, the least of all, God has revealed and God has given the unsearchable. I hear you, Apostle Paul. How will it happen to me? Number one, think of your uniqueness. Nobody else on earth has your fingerprints. Nobody on earth has your fingerprints. If you have a tablet, if you have a laptop, if you have a phone, and then instead of having numbers as the thing that will make you enter in, just put your fingerprint and nobody else will be able to get into that tablet. Why? Your fingerprint is unique. Your life is unique. Your future is unique. Your calling is unique. Number one, understand your uniqueness. Number two, unplug your life from any dead socket that doesn't carry any power. You are associated to this. That relationship is dead. It's not even bringing up any light. There is no activation there. And you do everything. And when you plug your life, you plug your system, you plug the fire wire of your life. It's dead. It's not bringing anything. Unplug and remove it from there. Somebody has given you a gift. And the gift is there. But you say, look at my gift. Look at my gift. It's wrapped up. What do you do? Unwrap it. You have gift from God, gift from heaven, unwrap it, unfold it. It is when you unwrap, you unfold, you say, look at this, uh -huh. don't just look, take it up, use it, use that gift, use that thing the Lord sends to you from the clouds, and he says, you and you alone can make it useful. The first you, uniqueness, and the last you have given here, usefulness. Your unique gift will make you useful. My unique gift will make me talk, talk, talk. Talk will make me useful and your usefulness will be unprecedented in jesus name now we have the v which is 
virtues, for valiant victors through his victory. You will not be a victim. I will not be a victim. You will not be a vacillating personality. It's here, it's there, and everywhere he goes, he just vaccinates. He came here, he did nothing. It's gone there. It's doing nothing. It's going another place. Just vacillating, vacillating about and doing nothing. Where you are, you will be there and you'll be a fruit. The college you come from, the university you come from, the school you come from, the village you come from, the town you come from, the nation you come from, there you'll be useful. I will be useful. You see, it, it, there's no point. <laughs> I tried this. And I didn't stay there long enough to produce fruit. Then I get out of there. Then I come there and just vacillating. Do, do you see the pendulum of that clock? Here, there, here, there. And it never goes beyond that limit. You'll go beyond every limit. How does that happen? We're looking at Second Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. According as his divine power, he has given unto us all things. He has given to us all things. I'm wondering what that means. I see somebody wanting to write an essay. I see somebody wanting to write an article. I see somebody want to write a new career. I see somebody wanting to write a new thing that will make history in our world. And he has the pen in hand. He has the paper on the desk, on the table. And he's just doing like this. And I come to, I said, my son, my daughter, what are you waiting for? He said, I want to write. I said, start writing. He said, I'm looking for the letters I will use. I said, all the letters I've been giving to you. There's no other letter. A, B, C, D. Unto Z. That's all. And he has given us all the letters to write a new story. And to write a new life. And to write a new height, all the letters we need has been given. And so we're not just going to put our chin on our hand and say, I'm waiting for another letter. I'm waiting for another alphabet. He has given us all. He has given me all. I said he has given me all. Look at it. That's what it says. According as his divine power has given unto us. Look at it. All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Then it says in verse 4, in verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. You are a partaker in Jesus' name. A possessor in Jesus' name. And then it says that having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What does this start? It starts with virtue. You come into this life, you see on the one hand virtue, on the other hand vice. And you make your choice and God says, behold, I put before you life and death, good and evil, choose. Choose life that you may live and then you will live to excellence in your life in Jesus' name. 
And so when you see vice, sometimes vice looks colorful. Sometimes vice looks uh, financially inviting. Sometimes vice will look like it will give pleasure. But vice is vice. And that vice will lead you to a place you are not thinking of or dreaming of. Choose virtue. That's what life starts. It starts as you choose Christ and as virtue, then vision. Vision. You know, if you're, if you're going through life, just looking down, you'll not see beyond the ground around you. But if you're going to, and I know you are going to amount to something, nobody will become a somebody. I didn't hear you now. When I prophesy to your life, you must accept the prophecy. And you must say, Amen to the prophecy. Brother, nobody, now, from today, your brother, somebody. Yeah. Sister, nobody, praise the Lord. I even see the smile on your face over here. You become, sister, somebody in Jesus' name. But, you must have vision vision is what gets us there this is a stadium and i see a father coming in and he has a little boy there and he's holding the hand and he's going and the child said daddy i can't see anything i opened my eyes but i can't see anything and then Daddy kind of, uh, you know, stoops down and he says, climb on my shoulder. And the little boy climbs on the shoulder of daddy. And the child, the boy says, daddy, I can even see beyond you now because I am sitting on your shoulder. That's how we get vision in life. And sometimes I can't see that. Sometimes it's too high. It's too great. It's so magnanimous. I cannot see. Climb on the shoulders of those who have gone before you. Climb on your daddy's shoulder. Climb on the author's shoulder. Climb on the builder's shoulder. Climb on the shoulder of that man who is who is uh, constructing something. Climb on the shoulder of that doctor. Climb on the shoulder of the engineer. And climb on the shoulder of the achievers before you. Read their story. Talk about their achievement. And find out what did they do to get to where they are. And as you climb on our shoulders you will see more than we have seen. You will go beyond where we have gone. It starts with virtue. Choose virtue, not vice. And then climb on the shoulders of those who have gone before you. And you will have a vision. After the vision, the vow. He made it by the grace of God. I will make it. I see his life, and his life was nothing to write to me about in the first few years. But he turned around, he changed, and he became what God wanted him to be. I make a vow. That's what God has shown me now. What God has revealed to me now from the beginning of this youth convocation impact transformed to lead. I make a vow to myself and to my God. I will be there. You will be there. And then vigilance, vigilance, vigilance. That your vigilance. You're preparing a good meal for yourself, for your family, 
You want to even feed the nation. You want to be vigilant that nobody comes to put sand in your eyes. Nobody comes to, you're watching. Look at Abraham. He was sacrificing to God. And the birds were coming. They wanted to take part of the sacrifice away from the altar of the almighty God. And Abraham drove them away because he was vigilant. You must watch over the vision that the Lord has crafted in your heart now. And anything that will come, any association that will come, any play play kind of game that will come, any strategy of the devil that will come to sift you away and to shift your attention from that vision, you will drive them away. Satan will not determine your destiny. And the evil spirits will not determine your destiny and your attitude. That's what we just had now. Bad attitude, proud attitude, ungrateful attitude. All those bad attitudes will not hinder your destiny. I choose to be up. And as you choose to be up, nothing or bring you down. Somebody shout, Amen. And look at the next one now. It's double you. It's the water of the world washing whiter through his worthiness. The water of his word that is washing us and washing us and cleansing us and is making us what we ought to be and it is through his worthiness. The Lord will put worthiness in your life. Amen. Don't ever say again I am not worthy. It's like God has given you the brain and then you have first class and then they say, they give the microphone to you and they say, talk, I am not worthy. Did you cheat? Did you, didn't you read? Of course you read. You are the kid of the king, a child of the creator and the Lord has lifted you up. Unworthiness has been taken away from your life. Unworthiness has been taken away from my life. You are worthy. I said you are worthy. And he'll wash you. He will wash you. He will wash you. Look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 7. In Psalm 51, verse 7, he's saying, Purge me. Me. Purge me. At, with Esau, and I shall be clean. You're clean. And wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. I shall be whiter than snow. Actually, this man who wants to be whiter than snow now, he had been washed before, and he was as white as snow. And then something happened. His emotion carried him away. His feeling carried him away. His feeling pulled him in the direction of vice. And he fell from grace to grass. Anybody could have stayed there. I'm no use. I'm no good. I'm bad. I'm whatever. I'm low. I've spoiled everything. <laughs> David said no. I've not spoiled everything. Now, I'm going to come back. Everybody, I will come back. I will come back. Whatever has happened, the worst that Satan could do in your life will not hinder the best that God will do in your life. The worst that Satan could do in your life will not hinder the best that God will do in your life. And so he came back to the Lord. He said, Lord, at the beginning, you washed me as white as snow. Now, what I'm asking of, I want to go higher than where I was before I fell. 
my son, my daughter, young man, young woman there, if the devil got the better of you and made you fall, wanting to destroy your future, you're there today, you can say, I was white before, I'm going to be whiter now. Somebody there. Whiter. Somebody shout, whiter. You'll be whiter in Jesus' name. You'll be brighter in Jesus' name. You'll be purer in Jesus' name. Purer than diamond. Stronger. <laughs> Look at Samuel. Uh, sorry, uh, that his name is Samson. Uh, that man uh, was powerful. He killed a lion. That man was mighty. That he destroyed all those Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Then he did something he shouldn't have done. He went somewhere he shouldn't have gone. And the enemy took advantage of his roaming about. The enemy took advantage of his walking about. And here, here, here. And eventually, they caught him. And they removed his eyes, out, outward eyes. The inner eye could still see the glory of God, the power of God, the intention of God. And even when the physical eyes could not see, the inner eyes could see. Because, finally, it's like, God, I see you on the throne what you'll do for me, give me a victory now that will be mightier than all the victories I ever had. And the Lord said yes to him. The Lord is saying yes to you today. Whiter, brighter, purer, stronger. And then he said, can you show me those two pillars that hold the building? And then he put his hand there because now he was mightier than he used to be. He was mighty before, but now he's mightier. And with all his strength, he could see God, the invisible one, on the throne. He said, give me this victory. I want to end my life with victory. Your life will end with victory. Yeah. You will not be a victim at the end of your days. A bench, and the record says he destroyed more of God's enemies at his death. More than any other time in his life. Whatever Satan has done in your life, the Almighty God will reverse it in Jesus' name. And then, whiter, brighter, purer, stronger, mightier, and the Lord will make you go farther than you have ever gone in Jesus' name. Who is that? Who is that? I said, who is that? That is going to be whiter and brighter and purer. Who is that? That is going to be stronger and mightier and go further. I, do I have him in the house? Do I have her in the house? Where is she? Where is he? The Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. Now, I come to double you. Double U, okay, that's what I've been talking about. And I want to come to X now. X, excelling, exceptional, extraordinary through his exploits. Ex excelling, I will excel. Extraordinary, I will be extraordinary. Exceptional. I will be exceptional. How? Through his exploits. Now, Christ specializes in exploits. 
He has the power to do exploits. He has the strength to do exploits. He has the anointing and the calling to do exploits. Now, I'm thinking about it. There were lepers in the land, and no leper came to him. How would we know that he had the exploits and he can cleanse lepers? A woman with issue of blood was there, and she never came. And if she never came, how would we know that Christ can do exploits? But Timaeus, blind, he came. If he didn't come, how would we know that Christ could do exploits? A man, Lazarus, dead for days. If the sisters did not call Christ to come and do that, how would we know that he could raise the dead? The exploits is recognized and seen in you. If you don't come, if you don't connect, if you don't say, here is my challenge, a challenge unknown, anywhere, and the people, the experts of the world, they cannot take this away. If you don't come to him, for him to touch your life, to turn your life around and to transform you. How would we know that Christ could do the exploits? The exploits in the ministry of Christ happened because all those people, they came. You have come already. I have come already. And the exploits of the Lord will be seen in your life. Look at Daniel chapter 11. We're reading from verse 32. Daniel 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Hold on. You know, some people say, all the people around me are corrupt. And because of that, they think they cannot excel. They say, I don't want to talk about our country. But there's something I read about in the papers all the time. Corruption, corruption, corruption. And since everywhere is corrupt, how can I have the exploits. Some people are stopped short because of all the corruption around them. But I see that white lily growing up and surrounded by all things that are black and dark and dirty. Yet the white lily shoots off and remains white. And that is the story of your life. In the midst of corruption, in the midst of crime, in the midst of contradictions, I see you growing up as white as lily. I see you growing up as strong as strong could be. I see you, the exploits of the Lord in your life, in Jesus' name. And then it says, but, but the people that do know their God shall be stronger and they shall do exploits. When the first part of the sentence says, all the people that do wickedly shall be corrupted by all the things around them by flattery. He said, but there are some people, they single themselves out and they say, in the midst of the corruption, there will be exploits in my life. Talk now. Say it out. What you say is what you get. Exploits in your life in Jesus' name. I'm thinking about it. How can I have his exploits in my life? Number one, explore explore. That's why we're exposed to this subject and this subject and this subject. That's why we're exposed to this 
area and that area as we're learning and as we explore and we don't just stay we're too young to stay on one narrow thing and one narrow subject a narrow endeavor we explore and then as we're exploring i've seen this i've seen that i expand expand you know as we go to college university we become undergraduates and then we become graduates and we learn and we explore everything that had been done before us why would they give us research work to deal with in a postgraduate level because they say although you have explored and all these have been done you need to expand expand this subject expand the knowledge expand the discovery and it is as you do that you don't stop with exploring you go to expanding and when you do that eventually you expand that means you're going to expend some energy and you're going to expand some sweat. You're going to expand, expand some cause. You put something into that area so that you will go beyond. I will go beyond. And you never allow yourself to expire. Sometimes you buy something like biscuits, like any other thing. And then you look for the expiry date. And beyond that expiry date, they say that thing is no good, throw it away. You want to make up your mind that you will never come to an expiry date. I will not expire. That is say, company. Why are you keeping this man? The man has expired. It's gone beyond the time and the period and the day of usefulness. I will not expire. It, it, you don't understand. Sometimes when somebody has expired, no new understanding, no new knowledge, no innovation, no discovery, and no new direction, the management will come to him and they will flatter him. They'll say, Mr. So-and-so, come to her, Mrs. So-and-so, you're so invaluable, you're so wonderful, but uh, we've been thinking about something in the, in the uh, company, in the management, we well, want to give you early retirement. Uh -huh. They want to get rid of him because he has expired. She has expired. No new understanding. No new thirst. He's sluggish. He's slow. He's retarded. He's even coming late to important meetings. It's like even in the meeting, he'll be sleeping and dozing. He has nothing to, contrib to contribute again. He has expired. I will not expire. <laughs> Somebody there, you will not expire in Jesus' name. And then uh, you will go on uh, experiencing growth every moment, every day of your life in Jesus' name. And now I come to why. Why? That's yearning, yielding, yoked to his youthfulness. Now, that word yearn, there's another word learn. It's because you yearn, that's why you learn. That word yearn, leading to learn, connects with another word and you yearn, you are not yawning. You know, there are people, they wake up early in the morning and they yawn in. They don't yearn. Why? All through the night, they were surfing the internet. They were scrolling. They were reading text, chat, message, everything. 
and they will not sleep in time. And when the alarm clock rings, it's like, stop that. I still need more sleep. But they have to go to school and they have to go to work. And when they get to work, because they are not prepared, instead of yearning, they yawning. That will not happen to you. You'll be fit. You'll be all right. You'll have the future before you. And you will say, today will contribute to the goal of my life. You yearn, you learn, you earn, you are honest. Honest. You come to life and it's like you are awake. You want to do something. You want to be something because you are honest in everything that you do. That's how we make it in life. And that is how your goal will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And yeah, at your age, at any age, and yeah, I desire, I want something more. I want my life to reach higher ground. Yeah. And then you learn. If you just yearn and you stop there and you don't learn anything. And now you understand. Anything we want to learn, you can have the search. Google search. How to learn about this. You can have a new degree just by yearning and readiness to learn. And you can have as uh, you know, one of uh, you know, young people told us just now, you can have mentors that will educate you, enlighten you, and develop you, and bring you up because you yearn, you learn, and show me anyone that yearns and learns, he will earn more. Your earning power depends on your yearning attitude. And then, yan, learn, and, and, and be honest about life. All that will take you to a new platform. Take me to a new platform. Amen in your life. Amen in your life. It tells us in Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. Your favor will not stop. Favor from heaven Favor from earth will meet together on you. Because of that, you'll make it in Jesus' name. I come to Z. Somebody say Z. In some places, they say Z. That's all right. Z, Z, they mean the same thing. Zealous, zestful, without zigzags. Like his zeal, zealous. If you are kind of plastic, indifferent, no emotion, no excitement, no power within, passive, you know, people will not track on with you. Everybody is running, you are there, hands, hand down. I don't know whether I want to run or not. I don't know whether I want to go forward on. People will bypass you. If you are there, no shine on your face. Everything is dull and dead. And there's nothing that makes people think you want to go forward and achieve. People will not like you to be a dead weight on them. To just be there and be a dead weight on the whole institution. This institution will pass you by. But when you have zeal, when you have zest, when you want to go to the zenith and you want to say, I'm reaching out, I'm reaching out, I'm reaching out. 
The world will make way for you. What are you? The world will make way for you. They say he's coming. The champion is coming. He's coming. The runner is coming. He's coming. The achiever is coming. They'll make way for you in Jesus' name. And those you've seen there before ahead of you. You see? Look at the man. Look at the man. Look at the woman. That man is a son, a spiritual son of uh, Pastor Kumui. Look at that woman, achieving woman, achieving lady. Did you know her? No, I didn't know her. Where's she coming from? Have you heard the name Kumui before? Yes, of course I know the name. It's a daughter of Kumui. I pass the fire into your heart. The zeal I pass into your life. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. What he said, others have never done before. I put you forth as my candidate. I said, they said nobody has done it before. Go forward and do it. They said nobody climbed that mountain before. Nobody broke the record before. I said, did you hear my son? Did you hear my daughter? Come. I present you as candidate to our country. I present you as candidate to the world. What they said, others have never touched. Others have never got. You are my candidate. You will not be a disappointment. I say go and achieve. Go and do it. Go and succeed. Go and bring first class back home. And the zeal of the Lord will do it in your life. Fire will burn every chaff out of your life. All those useless things that will not help you to climb your mountain, everything is taken away now. And as we go back home, I declare, let every hindrance clear out of your way. Where are you? I said, where are you? Stand up. Stand up. Ready to achieve. Ready to overcome. And ready to take on new responsibility in your nation, in your community, in your college, in your university, in your profession, in your school. Anywhere I release you with the power of the Lord and the presence of the Lord in your life, be an achiever in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth now and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I am. I accept that. I receive that. It is done. You've come into my life. You've saved me. You've cleansed me. You've washed me. I am white as snow. I'm even wanting to be whiter than snow now. Lord, do it. Achieve it. Confirm it in my life. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Young man. Young woman. Tell the Lord. Young adult. Tell the Lord. He'll open doors for you. He'll open your brain, your mind to the success he has ordained for you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will go with you. And you will not expire. They will not retire you. They will, they will say, we can't do without him. We can't do without her. And your star will shine brighter and brighter. Your mind will be stronger and stronger. Your body will be healthy and healthier all the days of your life. And you will be what God has called, created, fashioned you to be. And the rest of your life will be a bright, 
shining life that will never expire. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up that hand, a hand of the champion, of the achiever, of the overcomer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every good thing we have heard reproduce in everyone. Every boy, every girl, every youth, every young adult, a new strength, a new power, a new victory, a new knowledge, a new intelligence, a new righteousness, a new ability, a new skill in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, I send forth everyone as equipped, transformed, learners, earners, who yearn for better things in life. Do it for everyone. Take everyone, everyone, everyone from the zero level to the zenith of their lives. Write a new chapter in every life. A new book in every life. Use all these alphabets to make out a new story. A new biography of every life. Receive that. Believe that. It is yours in Jesus' name. Achieve us. Amen. Conquerors. Amen. Champions. Amen. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray.